it was related to people in power, but at the same time I had like a second side of what was going on with my friends in school, with my neighbors, etc. So I've never, I, I never belonged to that, uh, you know, light. Alina Fernandez, daughter of Fidel Castro, discussing her experience in Cuba under her father's rule before she fled to become an anti-Castro voice, and a strong one at that. Alina's story, one of many in a new book that raises questions about the children of dictators. For more, from Newsmax New York, we welcome in Jay Nordlinger, senior editor of National Review and author of the book, Children of Monsters, an inquiry into the sons and daughters of dictators. So Jay, how'd you come up with this notion for the book, The Progeny of Tyrants? Well, it's a strange one, isn't it? I was in Albania some years ago, and Albania had suffered from one of the worst dictatorships ever, that of Enver Hoxha. There was pretty much nothing else like it on earth, except for the Kim Il-sung dictatorship in North Korea. And I wondered, did Hoxha have children? And if so, what were their lives like? Did they keep their name? Could they go out? How did people treat them? What did they think? And so on. So that led to a book, a survey of such sons and daughters. Well, as you survey the sons and daughters of dictators, do some of them turn out to be angels, or are they evil incarnate and worse than their parents? There aren't many angels. Uh, there are people who strive to overcome their birth, their circumstances, and they are admirable. They're also perfect little monsters, just like the old man. Stalin had such a son. Ceausescu in Romania had such a son. And we remember those brothers Uday and Kuse in Iraq, Saddam's boys. They were really bad. And there were others, including successor sons, like two in North Korea, one in Haiti, Baby Doc, and the current Assad in Syria. Jay, we are looking at pictures of uh, Saddam Hussein's progeny. And I can just oh. remember visiting uh, Iraq one year after the hostility started out at Camp Victory, beside the airport there. And uh, our guides told us that they had rape rooms there to bring in underage girls whom they would deflower as part of their social gatherings. And that, as horrible as that is, may be some of their milder conduct. How bad were those two sons of Saddam? When Uday and Kuse were killed by our forces, there was rejoicing, a huge celebration all over Iraq because those kids, that's not quite the word, but kids had terrorized Iraq for so long. The celebration was greater than the one that followed our pulling Saddam Hussein, the father, the dictator, out of that spider hole. Wow. And uh, their, their misconduct, I'm sure you chronicle it in the book, but they threatened and killed Olympic athletes, part of the Iraqi national soccer team. They were all around bad people, uh, to say the least. Jay, let me bring it back to the here and now. Having spent time in Congress and having kids of my own, I can tell you under the best circumstances, it can be a challenge for children of public figures. Uh, maybe that's the crucible of running for political office in the United States, but these people whom you've chronicled in your book are the sons and daughters of dictators, people who took their power by force. Is there any family norm that you see there? Any universal rule in those families with those children? We got about 30 seconds. Well, there are patterns for sure, but it's tough for me to say something about nature and nurture because Ceausescu had two sons. One was a perfect monster and brute, and the other has lived blamelessly. So where does that leave me with nature and nurture? These are big, big questions, as is the question of loyalty. And uh, we hope that our viewers will be loyal to this particular interchange and go get your new book. It's Children of Monsters, an inquiry into the sons and daughters of dictators. Jay Nordlinger, senior editor of National Review, you have our thanks for your time. You heard what Jay had to say. Do you agree or disagree? We'd love to get your comments. You can send them to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments.